So how can crowdfunding become, you know, a more mainstream thing? Mainstream. Oh, because yes. I, feel, I had a thought yeah. in my mind, and, and that's why I got confused. Mainstream, I, I think it already is mainstream, to be honest. Because And I, I wouldn't have thought this um, myself. Like, I have to say, I, I have been disappointed with the progress of crowdfunding in the past two years since I've really been involved with it. I thought it was going to be like that, you know, and it, it's kind of like that. I mean, it's, but... Um, it is stunning how many dollars are invested in these deals. And I'll tell you why it's so stunning. I actually pulled up one stat. If I, I, share my, I, I don't have to share my screen. Um, but yeah, let me just, this is insane. I'd love right? to hear um, it. So I'm sure you're familiar with this, but it hit, it hit me for real when I actually like went through it, right? So you think about how much money, let's see, where is it? Um, gets invested in these companies, like millions, millions of dollars across all these portals. And you look uh -huh. at the investor limits, like, What's the average income in, or in in America? I'm guessing like 55K across the whole country. Something um, like that, yeah. Yeah, so your 12-month limit is not that much. And and I'm working at Star Engine, and I'm seeing, oh, let me uh, stop sharing my screen. And I'm seeing like, you know, you see the escrow, and there's just investment, 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 just flying flying through, right? Um, yeah. I'm pretty stunned how many actual dollars go through here. Um, I think the interesting question is, unfortunately, more than a minuscule amount of people don't seem to realize exactly what they're getting into with their investment. They might want their money back. They might like, they might be like, ah, that wasn't a good idea after all. But there's a lot of progress being made on the secondary markets. Um, Star Engine released a marketplace, for example. Um, Cedars in, in Europe has their own marketplace. We can just list. It's not, a, it's not, a, it's not an ATS. It's not like a, 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 um, a, what's it called? An alternative trade, trading, I think it is. But it's, it's a, a secondary market, right? It's an alternative trading for secondary market or whatever. So it's, it's, it's not real-time trades, um, but there's there a lot of progress being made in that too. Real-time trades, addition to marketplace. So they're solving that secondary issue to alleviate some of that um, investor friction on that where you want to sell. So I do think that's an interesting point because if you can invest in a company and almost see like the fair market value of the company you invest in per share slowly start to creep up, kind of like the stock market investing in stocks, yeah. I think that would incentivize a lot more people to invest in the companies. And then another point I want to make is I think as the ecosystem continues to grow and grow, the startups are going to realize how valuable uh, data points are, and they're going to start including more and more data, which is then going to make more and more people be willing to invest in those companies because it's kind of like the credibility, right? They can, they can track the revenue. They can see the expenses. Mm -hmm. They see all the disclosures. So it's, it's almost taking it from like a, a retail perspective to a almost professional investor mindset perspective. I totally agree with you. I, I think that it's so like, I think, I think I try to think of myself or I do think of myself and I try to always be an independent thinker. And I know the ridicule that I get from my good friends that I'm so serious and bought in on this industry. I think it's an awesome industry with so much opportunity in it. They work at banks and they're like, kind of like grow up some ways, you know, like there's, where, where's the money? And I think there will be. So like, will I be the fool in this or not? Right? Like, I, I think there's so much I, there are professionals coming into this. I mean, um, the guy who basically wrote the Jobs Act, he was one of three people that wrote it. I wrote a, wrote a piece on him, actually, um, his, his fund. He's launching a $5 million fund, and I think he has, like I think, about like $1.5 already committed uh, for institutional money to invest in equity crowdfunding deals. And he's using a quant thesis, which is, which is fascinating, right? Um, but and, and it's, it's, there's a lot like, to, to learn from that. Um, his quant thesis, for example, is looking at companies. They're not trying to pick winners but pick companies that are most likely to get a follow on BC investment. And that really was interesting to me because technically that's a validation. I mean, if you had, if you raise from equity crowdfunding at 20 million and you got a VC round at 40 million, like you are up double the money. And if you can actually pick those correctly, then that's, that's, that's great. Um, so I totally agree. I mean, there are going to be institutions that come in here for sure. And, and I saw that happen at, um, at Star Engine, right? You'd have an accredited investor be like, I got, I want to wire hundred K, 200 K in these companies. The problem with that though is, while these portals do, I assume others have these nice incentives for large investor programs where if you're a really big time investor, you get a lower fee. It's just easier if you're an accredited investor, just give somebody 100K and then not have to deal with all the other stuff, right? Um, that's kind of the, the, the challenge, I think. If you really know a rich person, do you want to go or that, that wants to invest in you? Is it worth the extra onerous costs and legal disclosures? And maybe not for an early company, but for there are Y Combinator companies that are on WeFunder all the time. I mean, there are some really good companies that are, again, the community round, right? That are getting investments from VCs that are opening up a sliver to retail investors because equity crowdfunding, investment crowdfunding is not really about the money as it is the marketing a lot of times. 
if you're doing investment crowdfunding purely for money, you're probably in trouble. Like there are a couple of companies that get away with that, but like, it's not a great generally idea to do it purely for money. But if you do it for marketing too, your consumers are your best, your, the, the investors are the best uh, brand ambassadors. I mean, what I'm investing in Start Engine and that, that's like, that's, that, that sticks with me. I mean, they're always top of mind when I think about equity crowdfunding and they have 36,000 of these investors, right? WeFunder has their own investors. Um, so, and, and then you think that for a consumer product, I mean, my co-founder um, is, is start, going to start a series on um, um, reviewing foods that are doing equity crowdfunding raises, right? So she has a uh, Blackbird pizza in the fridge. I believe that's the, the company name. So how cool is that? Like, you're just like so fascinated by a company that's raising money that you can invest in. You just want to try their pizza and then maybe tell your friends that you are an investor in it and like you want to get Blackbird pizza. It's the same thing with public stocks. I mean, one of my really dud investments was a Boston beer company and I lost like 50% on that and then gave up and then... They, uh, I always was drinking Trulies, you know, I didn't drink any other, I didn't drink any White Claws. It was only Trulies, you know, so I think you see a lot of that in investment crowdfunding. I'm an, I'm an investor in uh, Yayo Tequila on Start Engine. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, and uh, I, I mean, I drink it all the time.